Welcome to Softcore History. Hello, and welcome back to Softcore History. My name's Jake Goldman. I'll be your host for today, and I am joined, as always, by my two best friends and co-hosts, and a really nice guy working the switchboard today. First, we got Dan Regester over here to my right, stage left. What's up? Hey, Jake. I'm looking a little clean, aren't I? You're looking good. You're looking good. Um, you worried yet? No, because at the end of the day, I'm just going to have a nice meal. I think you're worried that you're going to have to spend all your ad money on a nice meal for me and whatever lady friend I decide to bring. I like how we've added stipulations to this. So Rob is also here. Uh, Rob is over here to my left. So Hey, anyway. And listen, um, if you're one of the female listeners we have, all five of you, uh, if you want to join us at this dinner, perhaps. DM Dan. <laughs> you're gonna, I do need a I date. Mean, you're going to yeah. get DMs for it. For sure. If you're in the Austin, the greater Austin area, I guess that includes Pflugerville, Round Rock, you Cedar know what? Park. Jake will fly you out as well. I'm not flying shit well, out, It's just bro. you have to spend all your ad money on Dan. It's really, you know, inside the restaurant of, of Lonesome Dove. Dove. Yeah. Um, so flight's out of the question, but she can have as many drinks as she wants until she runs no, out no, of No, no, no. She money. gets nothing. She gets nothing. Well, you can buy her drinks. Dan, it's, you're actually being a gentleman. You're like, let me get you a drink, babe. Uh, Jake, buy me. <laughs> Throw it on Jake's tab. Yes. <laughs> Although, I, I will not <laughs> spike the football too early. Jake still has a chance. I do. I'm going to it's not. It's a eat. fan vote. I have, I have no. That's true. Yeah. Hey, In that's fact, the thing. You, you doing this almost ensures that Jake will win. <laughs> Dan is at the 80. Right I, what I said and what should be is that you guys take your pants off and we take two pants down p- from waist down photos and they vote on who they like better. Not just wiener, but like legs and everything. Like maybe in a lunge kind of position. Whatever you think lo- makes you look the best. What if I just turn around, get my face between my legs as I'm bending over and show my little butthole? There's at least yeah, a dozen we're... people listening right now that have tuned in for the first time that have no idea what we're talking about. Uh, it's the hot off. Yeah, we're it's... having a hot off. <laughs> we'll revisit it again in December, too, but this is the first iteration of the hot off. Uh, I turned 31 in, on Saturday. On Saturday. You and turned I... 31 a few days later. On May 20th, yes. And, uh, yeah, we just decided who's hotter by our 31st birthdays. Yeah, and it was a competition we jumped into. Without... Leaving into a fan vote. Yeah. Um, really no kind of stipulations yeah no i'm gonna have confidence in myself i'm gonna get dressed to the nines look real hot i thought you should have leaned into getting fatter i think no. that's how you would have won fan votes no 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 is no, if no. you just got morbidly obese but i would have hated myself so i couldn't have done yeah that. but like no you would have loved yourself too no, no 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 just imagine that journey to get fat i you ever hear of like jared letta or no it was uh, i think it was char who was it it was uh rob mcelenny he ate, like, he would just leave ice cream out on He'd the counter. He'd right? drink melted ice He'd cream. He'd drink melted yeah, ice cream. Yeah, but then if you actually cared about this podcast and potentially maybe a spinoff, we could have brought back Sup's dog, and we could have had that journey of you going from really big a early. giant man, giant fat man, to a giant jacked man. I, you know, I think I'm, I'm here for getting jacked still. I, I'm actually here for Sup's dog still. I'm uh, back on my fitness journey. I, you know, I'm kind of a yeah, procrastinator. So yeah. I'm a procrastinator, so I waited until two weeks before the competition was over to start working out. I've worked out five days in a row, six days in a row, eight out of the last ten. Look, here, let me just, just cut through the bullshit here. All right, you're both in your 30s, okay? Only one of you is married. So, essentially, I'm in my 20s. No, yeah, and that's the problem because you're only appealing to women in, basically in their 30s. Thir- like, you're the more attractive one because they're like, oh, I can – He'll also, I, can, I can settle down with him, even if I have to rip I him away from his him. current wife. Yeah, yeah he's, he's stable. Even, even though me being with him will prove his actual instability, <laughs> he's stable and I should be with the him. The stench of woman is all over him. Yeah. Yes. The same woman. But. Yeah. Well, here's the thing, too, though. You got to remember, um, none of that comes through a fucking Instagram story. So, Doesn't it? Do I need to wear a shirt that just says married and house? No, you, just and go, you just do like a hmm. You me. can do whatever you want for you your photo. Them. Yeah. Uh, I will say, though, I did go to the barber today. To yeah, the haircut the looks good. Got well, the haircut. To uh, be fair, you went to like a, a, a chain haircutting place. I did. Where'd yeah. you go? Um, Floyd's. 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 Is, there, is, is that the one off of... Uh, it's it's on Brody. Brody. Yeah. I actually almost went in there the other day. It's good. Good, good cut. It's a good okay. cut. Um, uh, uh, also, a friend of the program's dad owns a bunch of them. Um, I'm going to take a picture of your haircut. There we go. Perfect. I'm going to walk into Floyd's. 
I'm be like, give me this. Give me that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take my photo. Uh, I will say, though, today I had, I know we, we kind of do, the, do a lot of the trans talk on the, the Drinking Bros Network. Um, and, you know, maybe. It's overdone. It's overdone, right? But, like, it's I will say. It's not a real say, issue. <laughs> I'm just going to say it's that. It's not. But... Um, I will say, though, I had a, a woman transitioning into a man as my barber, and I will never go back. Yeah, that's the, the FTM is the perfect, the sweet spot for the best haircut. Yes, because uh, you got to think about this, right? This woman has looked over the catalog well, of what she's wanting to transition into. And so she knows the styles. She knows <laughs> what's in fashion. And she just, you know, did her thing. I was like, I trust you. Uh, let me be your canvas. Yes. That's every time I get my hair, I'm like, what would you cut my hair because <laughs> i don't know what the fuck so i will never go back i will only you really you walk into a sports clips and they're like i don't go to sports you. clips i'm not a fucking peasant okay <laughs> who yeah. the fuck floyd's is a little class here okay? yeah it's i go to not. shed you're paying like 30 dollars a haircut that's how much sports clip sport clips cost. i go to shed it's 40 and shed's legit i used to go to lifetime the spa or whatever and i'm just like no nah, not, not going back and i'm not going back to a man or a woman i'm going to them a woman first transition both of you guys right now you're like bragging about eating at Cheesecake Factory. All right, like, calm down. I still look better than you. Sports Clips is Cheesecake Factory. What are you talking about? No, Floyd's is Cheesecake Factory. Sports Clips is uh, Applebee's. (laughs) But her name? Nah, nah, Haircuttery is Applebee's. Whatever, anyway. His name was Ash. Supercuts. And uh, he was fantastic. Okay. Yeah. She, it, it was cute, too. You're really having a hard time with the program. There's no G- I, yeah, Not doing it right. Doing. Not doing Ash justice. I'm not doing Ash justice. He... Did a great job. Uh, but you can tell, like, the hormones were starting to kick in. Had that little mustache that we all had when we were in, like, fifth grade. The power stash. Yeah. 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 Uh, the one that you don't shave until way too long. Because like, you don't notice it. It comes in too subtly. And, you're, and then someone's like, dude, you got a dirt lip. And you're like, no, I don't. And then you go, like, really examine it. And you're like, oh, uh, God. Yeah. I knew a kid I that. still grow only that. I knew a kid that grew that out and still never shaved it once. Yeah. And well, it was disgusting. For the first couple And they're years. in jail now? No, they just hang out in Ocala. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, we have a great show for you today. I'm really excited about it. It's about, um, you know, persistence. Sometimes you fuck up. You just got to keep going, mm-hmm. right? So uh, it's called marriage, am I right? <laughs> hey, yeah. tell me about it, Dan. You wouldn't know. Anyway, uh, when we talk about, you know, the heroes that battled in World War II, there's a lot of imagery that comes to mind. But let me ask you guys, what music typically like typically pops in your head when you think of world war ii what kind of music uh vietnam era music fortunate son fortunate son. When, when you're talking about world war ii yeah fortunate son i just think of that when i see like d-day really i just think of uh like no, german I, radio playing american hits yeah you think of the boogie the woogie boys. bugle boy from company b yeah right the little like uso all right you're about yeah. to go die but but da, 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 da. Yeah, and then between songs, they just talk shit to American soldiers about how you are all to gonna die. die. So you, the journey, it's not the journey. The famous one is Tokyo Rose. That one. Right. Who's yeah. like, "Hello, American soldiers! All your women are being slept with by the Negroes back home, and you're going to die tomorrow." And then they play another like top. They play whatever like uh, I don't know. Katy Perry was in the 1940s. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, a Selena just, Gomez hit comes on the 40s. the soundtrack to Fallout. Yeah. Like that, yeah. my main reason for wanting World War III is to be on a ship, you know, off the coast of China and have like Beijing Betty telling me that uh, my wife is a lesbian now and that I'm going to be... Your wife's a man now. Yeah. <laughs> your wife is transitioning to <laughs> whatever. And then, like, That's Chinese true. missiles will rip you to pieces She's tomorrow. She's cutting Dan's hair. Right? Yeah. And then, you know, Kesha comes out and is like, I'm going down. <laughs> I'm yelling to me. <laughs> Well, that's what I want out of life. Speaking of ships, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Uh, and if there was a music to accurately sum up this World War II ship, it would probably be the Benny Hill theme song. Because okay. today uh, we are going to be talking about the USS William D. Porter. Oh, I, is, thought you, I thought you were going to go uh, off of my episode and be like the Indianapolis and just like all the funny hijinks that happened when those sailors got eaten by now, sharks. Is the Benny Hill theme song the Six Flags theme song? No. 
Oh. It's you like, do, 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 You ever see, like, a set of six doors and people running in between them and coming out with different people? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes, that's yes. about it. Not the... Bah, 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 bah. It's no. not far off. It's not that... Actually, you it's could probably accurate. mash that up, dude. You're going down. Well, yeah, then so then we're going to have a Benny Hill, Six Flags, Kesha mashup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. That yeah. just sounds As Beijing like party Betty talk. Is, you, know? you know, like Chinese Girl talk? bullets. Will. Girl talk. Yeah. Was. yeah. <laughs> okay, so the USS William D. Porter was a U.S. Fletcher class destroyer. Um, personally, I always wondered why the destroyer in the original game of Battleship only got two squares compared to a cruiser or a submarine. I believe that the USS William D. Porter may be solely responsible for that. While destroyers are typically very necessary escort vessels that have the firing capacity and maneuverability to defend larger ships from attack, the Porter might as well have been an anchor to any mission it happened to haphazardly lumber into. It is the, I don't know if it's incompetence, luck, or what have you. Like luck, what? Like bad luck? Bad Bad luck. luck. Okay. The worst luck. Was it a new ship? Brand new ship. Okay. Okay. So it wasn't like left over from the 20s and they're like, nope. well, we got to toss everything we fucking got at, at these motherfuckers. No, it was uh, commissioned in, it was commissioned July 6th, 1943. So the middle of the war. Well, look, if you give a 17 year old a Tesla. No, it wasn't yeah. run by a 17 year old. It was run by someone on a fast track. Well, to I'm be, just saying though, like you give yeah. an incompetent person a nice car. That Listen, uh, a Tesla is a nice car. That's Let's a cheesecake factory of cars. The brakes there. <laughs> That's the uh, Floyd's of cars, if you know what I mean. Uh, the short career of the Porter was riddled with issues from the start of its commission to its hilarious end, and maybe the vessel most accomplished at failure in the U.S. Navy. Period. What, what theater did it serve in? Oh, um, well, it started in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay, right. we're, we're gonna. It's gonna go some places. Right, go some. Yeah, has a journey, and you're gonna take us on it. Yeah. So all of these stories in my mind are like, oh yeah, that could happen. But the fact they are all directly tied to this one boat makes them worthy of their own episode today. It's fucking bananas how bad the ship is at doing war. Okay. So, uh, the Porter was launched in September of 1942. It kind of sailed around Guantanamo Bay, did its shakedown stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, in the Caribbean, uh, shakedown is where you do like the testing of the boat and like all those super maneuvers and stuff like that. So it goes to Charleston in 1943. Once that's done and gets its repairs done and it gets commissioned July 6th in 1943 after handling training exercises for a few months in Charleston, it goes up to Norfolk, Virginia and, That's where the Porter is tasked with its first mission. It's escorting a fleet of ships across the Atlantic to North Africa, including the very famous battleship, the USS Iowa. Okay. Are you familiar with that one? Not super duper, no. Okay. So this pretty much sounds like a normal mission, right? Like as normal as any mission you typically hear of during World War II time. Fighting around the world. (laughs) Togo! (laughs) That's your South Park reference for today. Uh, Got out of the way early. I love that episode, though. Uh, this, mis- this mission was actually way more important because the President of the United States, the Secretary of the State, and the Joint Chiefs of Staff were all on the USS Iowa on a secret mission to meet with Joseph Stalin and Winston Churchill at summits in the Mediterranean. So this is actually a... Is this the one on, like, Cyprus or... Yeah, it's in the Mediterranean. So they- Go ahead. Well, they, did, they had the one in Tehran, but that was near the end of the war. So yeah, this, so this one is, was... This is late 1943 in November. Okay, that so was before it, Tehran for sure. It's it's on the so they go to there's a I think there's a summit in North like Egypt, okay. and there's a there's a summit in Tehran as well. They're going for a couple stops in the Mediterranean. Okay, and they're meeting with these dignitaries. Um, obviously, it's a very big mission, and it's the first one that's putting the right. destroyer to the test. Killing the president big. would be dope for the for the Germans. Yeah, exactly. Be pretty sick. So. Um, I guess, you know, to celebrate that and what I can only assume is the attempt to make the worst first impression ever, the USS William D. Porter manages to destroy a sister ship when exiting port for its very first mission. How? They just ram it? Uh, So someone didn't fully bring in the anchor and the ship slowly backed down along the other ship's side when leaving port and they didn't like Stop. So it just ripped a hole in another <laughs> fucking boat? They with decom- the anchor? With the anchor. They left the anchor sick. like halfway down. So We don't use anchors as weapons enough. I no. <laughs> so with the anchor in its position, the accident tore down all the railings on the side. It ripped off the life rafts and the captain's gig and various other formerly valuable pieces of equipment. Uh, the William D. Porter suffered, unfortunately, a slightly scratched anchor. Well. That sucks. Did, it, did the anchor still work at least? Yeah, it worked, but it okay. was scratched. Still I mean, heavy. Yeah, I, it's like when you put a dent in it's your an, new car. Yeah, it's embarrassing for all like to, for all the fish to see it. Yeah, right. But you know, 
nothing like, hey, we got this brand new boat. We just decommissioned another one that looks exactly like it with yeah. ours. So that there can only be one. That happened November 11th, 1943. Okay. Keep that in mind. Uh, the captain of the Porter, Wilfred Walter, issued a quick apology. And then basically it was like, uh, I got to meet up with the Iowa. Like, yeah. we're already late. We're late to meet up with this. Was convoy. that other boat coming with them too? No. Okay. It, was just, so it was just there. It was there. Yeah, it fuck was that boat. Yeah. Okay. Right, First like you thing, can, dude, when you have a president to, to escort, you can't be worrying about things oh, like no, no, no. pulling so your you leave, your, you leave your insurance and you go. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you go on a road trip, you get in a little fender bender, your car doesn't really have much yeah. damage, you're going to continue that road trip. Yeah, leave a note and get the fuck out of there. That's basically what he did. So, uh, essentially, day one into their mission, they have, all right, day one, November 11th, they have decommissioned another naval boat. Just okay, keep that in mind. So their boat works really well. Yes. I mean, what's that boat built to do except decommission other naval boats? Uh, okay. Sounds like it's doing its job. Yeah. They also arrive very late to the rest of the boats. Well, they were busy decommissioning that other boat. <laughs> they got held up. What do, you want, yeah. what do you want this boat to do? Okay, so this is the least of their issues. This is like uh, there was some fucking comedian that was like, like I feel bad for Ray Rice because he just did football at the wrong time. Oh, that's um, that's Neil Brennan. Oh, is that who it is? Yeah. yeah. It's the same thing with this boat. It just did, it just it did, did being it did, a destroyer at the wrong time. It didn't do being a destroyer. It was shitty at backing out. Did it destroy something? <laughs> then it was a destroyer. <laughs> Your good friend, Neil Brennan. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the mission fleet consisted of four boats, the battleship USS Iowa, and then two other destroyers beside the USS Porter. During the eight-day journey across the Atlantic, it was important that the entire fleet be ready for anything and everything that could be thrown at them. They often what, what, did, what did FDR do on a battleship? Laid low. No one knew he was on there. Can't, so was he just in the captain's quarters? Obviously, the captain's not sleeping in his own quarters no, when the president's on board. No, he was just kind of in the supply unit. So think about yeah. this, too. Yeah, it wasn't just FDR. It was the Secretary, Secretary of the State and the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Right. So they... They're all going, like, unbeknownst to anyone else. It's a mm. secret mission to get them out there. I feel like that's too many eggs in one basket. It's stupid. <laughs> like, the <laughs> Secretary of State and the President on the same boat is fine, but also putting George C. Marshall, I assume, and everyone else Dude, on there. you're taking, like, how many steps down the line of succession of the presidency? Well, the, well, no, the no, Vice no, the President Joint was Chiefs on. are on there, so the succession line is fine, but you're taking out, like, potentially every major military mind you might have. Sure, yeah. That's a little problem. I mean, I guess Eisenhower and MacArthur. All right, forget that. What kind of swimmer do you think FDR was? <laughs> Not bad. very good. Bad. I mean, all upper body. Well, he just crushes First off, dude, you tread water with your legs. Yeah, but is he going butterfly? Like, what is he doing? He's, What's his stroke of He's course? going to the bottom of the ocean. He's go- well, first off, he's doing doggy paddle. Yeah. Because that's all he can do. Right. And secondly... He's just dying. No, I t- I'm a pretty strong swimmer, but I typically lean on my upper body for most of it. I feel like FDR could have been a decent swimmer. Maybe he was. He probably got polio in a pool. That's where you got it back then, usually. Really? Yeah. Public pools, pools were a huge spreader of polio. I bet you never belonged to a public pool. You don't be- no one belongs to a public pool. It's not you a country have club. you a membership to a public pool? Uh, you do, actually. Yeah. And I did. You just, Not, neither of you. Heeman Park, University City, baby. Ridley Swim Club. What's up? Oh, I uh, just showed up to the pool at an apartment normally. Not in, as a kid, I guess. And as a child. No, we would just go to like, I lived on a lake. I didn't really need swim, to go to a pool. Swim with the Gators. Yeah, dude. They're yeah. chill. Yeah, and everybody in Florida had a fucking pool in their backyard. I didn't have a pool. Well, you were poor. Oh, sure. Okay. Not even middle class. Yeah. Just lived on a fucking muck lake. Pretty much. Yeah. Anyway, uh, keep in mind, the waters they were crossing were reportedly teeming with U-boats, and they were carrying the president on the USS Iowa, so being able to act quickly and communicate quietly was of the utmost importance. So radio silence was often a uh, running order. For yeah, these you were communicating with uh, more signal lamps. lights and stuff like that. Signal yeah. lamps. Very important. Very important. Yeah. Here. So uh, they would actually send owls back and forth. Yeah, they did that too, I guess. Yeah. We'll, we'll check that later. We'll fact check that. And there's Dan's Harry Potter reference in yes. the episode. Just gotta force that. Gotta, in. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, the porter had just caught up with the fleet after leveling that ship, and she was ready to fucking party. Okay. She's ready to go. So uh, one of the functions of destroyer ships that you might not know is they drop death charges mm-hmm. on Already enemy submarines. That. Oh, did you? Yeah, we knew that for okay. sure. We talk, we talk about that like all the time, all right, the right time. before you get here. Y- you guys do. Yeah. 
That's all we talk about, actually. We're big depth charge. I'm going to just assume everyone knows everything. We don't need to have episodes anymore. Yeah. Like, I don't okay. have any other conversations with Rob other than that. <laughs> it's just yeah. depth charge implementation? Yeah. Good. Um, so, if a sub gets too close, a destroyer will drop a depth charge, and it will deter or destroy the submarine from approaching. Of course. Um, As a depth charge does. Yeah, and if you need any more explanation, it's... A bomb you drop in the water and it, and it and goes up. off at a certain depth and yeah. you can set it to depths. Yes, you can. Yeah. Well, in keeping up with preparedness, the fleet ran some submarine preparedness exercises and the porter was tasked with disarming their charges and dropping dummy depth charges during the exercise while they're all out of the ocean. Mm-hmm. Do you see where we were going? No. Are okay. They not dummies? Well, in the wee hours of the morning of November 12th, so a day later. <laughs> yeah. So they're just still in the mood for doing some destroying. Uh, this I'm sorry. What is What would you expect the destroyer to do? <laughs> You're talking about a destroyer like it's fire. Basically, it's like, yeah. the fire doesn't care who it who creates yeah. it. it will the destroyer burn. doesn't care who it destroys. <laughs> it's not a sentient boat. It's filled with... Sounds like it is. It, it's, this one might be. The boat was thirsty. <laughs> it was thirsty. The boat had a hunger for... <laughs> so, in the wee hours of the morning of November 12th, this isn't even 24 hours later, uh, the sonars of every ship in that four-boat fleet light up like a fucking Christmas tree. All the ships went into evasive maneuvers because they had an explosion right in their vicinity. While well, senior officials tried to determine if they had been made by Axis powers, the captain of the porter has... Well, let's not... Let's pump the brakes. They weren't made by Axis powers. Italy had, like, one wooden boat. It was only the Germans. It was, it was, the, it was the, yeah. go, the gondola in Italy Venice. Italy just had a Venetian <laughs> gondola where some guy was like, Hello, allies, I kill you, allies. I love to kill the allies. Those and, guys and, that are, guy, and that guy died in 1941. Like they, that was just, that and then they had another it. guy later on, and he switched, and he was for the Allies. Yeah. 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 Um, but so, he switched the ways he was rowing. So basically, they had to decide, like, they had to figure out if they'd been made by the Germans, not just the Axis powers. Yeah, just put no credit on Italy. And they're under a, they're under a uh, comms ban right now for radio. Right. So <laughs> they're all freaking out, and the captain, the porter, has to get on the radio and be like, my bad. Sorry, guys. And by the way, the reason the Indianapolis, when it sank in the Pacific, the reason it took so, so long to find it was because that captain was like, no matter what, I can't radio because we delivered an atomic bomb. So I just have to like let my men get eaten by sharks. That sucks. Meanwhile, the, the, what's this boat again? The Porter. The Porter is just like, oh, hey, guys, I dropped a barrel on accident. Sorry. <laughs> Stop freaking out. My bad. My bad, guys. <laughs> Davy, go Davy. So uh, apparently they forgot to secure and disarm their depth charges during right. the exercise. And uh, their seas were rough, and one just kind of rolled off the stern. What um, happen? After reading through this, I read through like a couple of different uh, descriptions of what happened or what they think happened. If the depth charge would have detonated the depth it was set to, it would have either destroyed the porter or the Iowa, killing FDR. Sick. So it it wait, how close was the Iowa? It wasn't that far away. Apparently, it was an accident. So they were moving yeah. around, and I don't like it, either no. way. Like, so it probably was set to like no depth, basically. Yeah, it just kind of like like it gets to ten feet, and it's just like. Beep, it exploded way deeper than they thought it would. Though. Okay. So it, everyone just got lucky, basically, because if it would have detonated at like the normal depth, I think the um, they were saying the stern of the porter would have exploded. Are yeah. we sure FDR didn't die, and the rest of his presidency was filled by a double? I'm I, positive. I can't. I can't. Super positive. Has that Burden been of proofs up? on you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm asking the the questions. You're asking is. questions. Yeah. No. Yeah. I um I personally do we know if the wheelchair was ever replaced? I feel like that's a pretty easy thing to replace. Yeah. Especially back then. Well, I mean, they seem pretty common. I mean, I don't know what FDR looks like. But like a lot of people probably didn't. He had a couple, uh, a couple of them. He had like a, a casual kind of wicker wheelchair, and then oh. like a more business steel wheelchair. Yeah, like an industrious wheelchair. Yeah, like when he's when he's at his place in Georgia. What's that Bill Murray movie where he gets jacked off by his cousin? <laughs> what? <he's> FDR. <laughs> what? FDR is getting fucking jacked off by his cousin right There's before There's a he Bill died. Murray movie where he's playing FDR and, and getting he's getting jacked off by his cousin. Well, well he's getting move. jacked off by his cousin all the time, isn't he? Who, FDR? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I'll look it up real quick. Okay. Um, it was a good movie, too. And it was like FDR's last days because he died in Georgia. He was at a, a Roosevelt vacation place. Uh, what? 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never heard of this movie. It was called like uh, like Last Hand Jobs of Forty Four or something like that. It's is yeah, he, he serious right he now? He nailed it. That, that's <laughs> yeah, exactly the last hand job about. of Forty Four. Well, he died in Forty Five actually, but. Uh, what is the name of this movie? Yeah, but he won an entire. It year is real though. Hand job. So, damn it! Factually Where is this movie? <laughs> oh, this movie you oh, can't. Yeah, Hyde Park on Hudson, 2012, <laughs> and uh, Laura Linney jacked him off. It's Laura Linney again? Yeah, Laura Linney. Laura Linney's in every. You're making shit up. No, Laura Linney is. In I, everything. It's right here. Hyde Park on Hudson. I can't make that up. Yeah, here's that. Laura Linney's in it. Yeah, and there's a it's a jack, it's an FDR jack off movie with Laura Linney, <laughs> and he just kind of like he's got his little he's real. got his little like penguin cigarette holder. Nobody wants Laura Linney in the movie, and he's just like, huh, why don't she you? Just uh, does she nag movie? him before she jerks him off? No, he just like moves her hand over. Like it's pretty rapey. Wow. Yeah. Well. Anyway, this would be the second severe. So we'll do on the Patreon. We'll be watching Hyde Park. On we Hudson should. This that's week. definitely a watch along. Yeah, uh, this would be the second severe mishap in this twenty-four hour total. So um, at some point, so we just had November eleventh decommission the ship. November twelfth, right. again. And I just, I'm just telling you, the destroyer seeks to destroy. Sure. So I don't know what you. It's like bringing a bear. Yeah, like if a circus bear, right, is riding a tricycle through a, a hoop of fire. And it somehow attacks one of its trainers. Like, is it really on the bear? Yeah, this is actually, this destroyer is a circus bear riding a tricycle through a hoop of fire. And it's attacking its trainer over and over and over again. Okay, so we're going to move to November uh, November 13th now. Okay. The next day. Cool. Um, a rogue wave dislodges all the safety railings on the porter. That sounds like that doesn't sound like their fault. No, it's not. I'm just this is the unluckiest boat. Okay. That's the premise. I'm not saying it's mm. like it's a mix of everything. Yeah. So uh, the problem I don't with know the dis- if this is an unlucky boat. Yeah. The boat kind of seems like it's it's got an agenda. Okay, so you might be right because maybe the boat was asking for the wave to knock the safety railings off because like fuck it, no rules, no safety. That, Fun above safety. For sure. And also, you know, the earth knows that you have to destroy a destroyer. What yes. if it's just a sleeper cell boat? It's a Manchurian boat candidate. Yeah. We find out that the captain of the boat the whole time was Charles Lindbergh. He was after, a Nazi, yeah. After yeah. all, the next couple things I'm going to tell you, they definitely suspected that the boat was in on trying to kill FDR. Oh, sick. <laughs> yeah. Like, so... Uh, Nobody on the boat, just the boat itself. The boat itself. Yeah. It's a mind of its own. Was it's it like haunted? The, it's like the Flying Dutchman, Is you it know? Ghost Boat? No, it's brand new. No one's died on it until right now. So... <laughs> 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 so the safety railings actually didn't even die on it. So safety railings, rafts, and uh, are get knocked off the thing. They lose them, but they also lose a sailor okay. in the process. So this is day three. Yeah. Um, at this point, the admiral of the mission basically demands hourly status reports via a signal lamp because he just gives an ass chewing to Captain Walter to get his shit together. He's like, you guys cannot be fucking up this bad. It is your third day out at sea. Right. Like, how are you fucking up this bad? But shouldn't that be the time you are fucking up the worst? Yeah, this just sounds like an average cruise Like, liner. it's a fucking think, noob. Well, well, think about it, though. Like, yeah, you're with your team, and they're fucking up. The new guys are fucking up a little bit. You're going to cut them some slack. But yeah. if the CEO's riding along with you, you got FDR. They're, like, trying to make a good yeah. impression and I'm shit. Maybe sure, don't like, send noobs out. Every Why are car- noobs? I mean, I understand that the most of the Navy needs to be with the Pacific, because that's where most of the naval battles were. But at the same time, yeah. I mean, maybe don't send the rookie to block... For Tom Brady. Plus, every carnival cruise has at least two people fall overboard. Yeah, you just never hear about it. They get sucked under. Yeah. They and get, they, yeah, they get so impelerated that yeah. it doesn't matter. It, nothing matters. Either way, whole problem out here. Needless to say, this was clearly one of the roughest starts to a destroyer's career as a commissioned vessel. Again, I disagree. It's doing exactly what it was trained to do. Yeah. Well, in order to see something even more ridiculous, you would have to go to November 14th, 1943, the next day. Okay. Yeah, because this is also what happened. So it's a cool, it's a good week. <laughs> it's, it's, a good week. Just it's just shit. a rampage mode, yeah. <laughs> so the, the sea, on November 14th, uh, 1943, the sea and skies on this day are calm and clear, and FDR himself takes the initiative of asking the crew of the Iowa to demonstrate that they could defend themselves if someone tried to attack them. Uh, and I imagine this is because he's like, well, this one boat's not going to help you what out. What do you mean? If I'm FDR, like, what do you, like, well, I want to see the boys take to the guns. Like, what? No, just <laughs> shut get up. A, get a, go get a hand job and drink some bourbon or whatever. Like, just shut up. Right. Smoke uh, your cigarette in the bowels of a ship. And it's a sad hand job. 
There's nothing going on down there. He just wants to feel something. He wants, he wants to be wanted. Yeah, he, he wants, wants, to wants to be wanted. wanted. He wants to be yeah. wanted. It's yeah. just like a worm, like a <laughs> dying worm in the dirt. Ew. <laughs> All your penis uh, analogies the last two episodes have really gotten under my skin. What was the other one? Husband's oh, your bulge. mom's dick. Oh, husband's, husband's bulge. bulge. Mom's dick I came up with. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, uh, I never answered that question, by the way. Is my dad. Do you have your dad's dick or your mom's dick? I would assume. One, I asked the question of you. And I answered. I said, I'm a mom's dick. Um, I assume I have my dad's dick. Okay. But You've got a, you Murphy, assume, you've got a Murphy penis. But you can't confirm. Yeah, I, can't, I, I have a Murphy penis for sure. I haven't sure, seen but. anyone on my mom's side's dick either, though. So, But I got redressed her hair. I definitely have golden hair because no, like, no one on that side of my family is bald. Mm. Um, so FDR asked him. He wants to see if they can handle an attack from the air, so they decided to do anti-aircraft drills. Uh, the way this particular... It's 43? Yeah, it's 1943. They're not getting attacked from the air. It's not happening. Not yet. FDR wants to see some planes. He, just, he, just he wants, wants to, to see, see the guns pew, go pew. He just pews. wants to see pew, pew, pew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What he just got bored getting down there. Like no one, there was no one else to jack him off. <laughs> The Secretary of State. Like, was let's see tired. something fire off. Yeah. No, I mean, somebody was trying to jack him off for like three and a half hours and just nothing. Yeah. It's like, I want to see some gunfire today. And um, really, we're not going to do a whole watch along for that movie. We're just going to do like the jerk off scene. Only that. So thing. the 15 minutes or whatever the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Laura Lenny's best 15 minutes. Just her stoically looking away, trying before her best. eventually giving up. Yeah. yeah. Actually, let's just do a uh, let's just do a super cut of Laura Lenny history sex scenes. <laughs> Laura Linney period piece sex scene. Why There's got to be at least 30 minutes. Why is there so many Laura Linney sex scenes? In period pieces. <laughs> Nobody wants it, though. But. I do. Yeah, that's Rob's type, Laura Linney. Yeah. Well, it's not my type. This is what I get. <laughs> okay. Anyway. What you accept. Yeah. We're going to continue. The way this particular. My wife is beautiful. <laughs> she's not listening, but she's beautiful. No. Oh, yeah. I was going to ask how she handled the damn yeah, cucking I mean, you joke. She's not fucking listening. She's not listening. <laughs> she didn't listen to this shit. You think I'd marry someone that listens to garbage like this? Oh, my wife listens. <laughs> thanks for listening, babe. She gives us money. Hooray! Yeah. Anyway, thanks for listening and giving us revenue for us. Uh, the way this particular drill worked was that the Iowa re- would uh, release balloons that served as targets for anti-aircraft guns. That's just a waste of time. <laughs> it's, someone had to this. This literally, those. actually, I'm sorry. The president's jerking himself <laughs> off. At this point, I'm actually glad I'm He's getting. Like, Look at what I'm in charge of. I'm glad I'm getting the historical context from you guys because, like, all this probably could have just been prevented if they didn't want to see things done. Yeah, yeah. It's like, why don't we just get them there? Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Maybe the exercise before because that came actually down from like a real chain of command. Yeah, but this was just like <laughs> FDR wanted to see some balloons is, get shot. When you see like a, a per, like if if you ever saw like a missile go off in like a Russian or North Korean military parade, yeah, this feels like a smaller equivalent of that. Okay, so um, the balloons served as targets for the anti-aircraft guns, and everything was going great until some of the balloons drifted over to the porter, and someone thought it was time for redemption for the last three days. So uh, I don't know what was running through his head here, because at this point in my head, I would have been down, like just head down. I'm just like, I mean, like ready. Let, just let the balloon go. It's, yeah, just we don't need to it's prove fine. anything. It's just let the balloon go. It's, it's a balloon. fucking balloon. This yeah. is for a president. Uh, but apparently, uh, Walter ordered his crew to fire at any balloons missed by the Iowa's gunners, and that all went fine. They actually crushed that. They okay. shot them all down. Uh, but then he started feeling himself, and he wanted to do a little bit of a heat check. Yeah, which, uh, not ideal. No. You don't really heat check in a combat zone. <laughs> no. So, uh, feeling cocky, he ordered a practice firing of their, fake torpe- of their fake torpedoes, and they decided to use the USS Iowa as the fake torpedo target. Sure. As one does. Yeah. 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 You know what's about to happen, don't you? Yeah. They, yeah. Real yeah. they announced fire one. And first, they fired the Why fake... were they facing the Iowa <laughs> in that way? I don't know. Because torpedoes fire from the front of ships. Yeah. So they... Do they have to turn to face the broad side of the Iowa? I don't know the logistics, man. You're getting broad. Or maybe here. they were behind it. I think they might have been. They might have been in the rear at this point because okay. they did. They did when the wave. Now that you mentioned it, when the wave knocked the guy over, it went down in the boiler room, and they lost a boiler, like one of the boilers in the room. So okay. they had to so they drop back. behind the Iowa. Yeah, they were probably just they catching did up. Did not follow the first rule of torpedoes. Treat every torpedo as if it was a loaded torpedo. Yeah. So they announced fire one, and the first fake torpedo was fake fired. Went off great. Fire two. Second one goes out. Fire three. And then they all heard a swooshing sound. 
and they all knew a real torpedo had just gone out. As opposed to what? Uh, apparently, the fake ones don't sound like real torpedoes. They make a whistle. Go, yeah, kind yeah. Of like it's a, like a Nerf uh, football. A Nerf football. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the crew watched in horror as an actual torpedo left the tube and made its way for the Iowa and the President of the United States. Remember when I told you guys that radio silence was often in order the fleet was operating under? Vortex. Mm-hmm. Not, not well, you, sometimes you just got to get on that horn and be like, hey, we uh, fired a real <laughs> bullet at you. Well, yeah, they did that with the depth charge. You're right. They were really scared of fucking up at this point, so right. they didn't get on the radio. So they were just like, please miss? No, they, uh, they held up their orders of silence and decided uh, radio silence trumped the life of their commander-in-chief and everyone else on board the Iowa, so they used light signals to warn the Iowa a torpedo was coming. But they couldn't get that part right. So the signalman quickly told the Iowa that a torpedo was in the water, except he said that it was going in the opposite direction of where it was going. Mm-hmm. So, the, so you had to uh, turn into the torpedo. <laughs> so how the, long do you actually have? I don't. That's what I was wondering too. They must have been pretty far away. Like it, it must not go very fast. Like I imagine a torpedo would be. I mean, like, it's underwater, so it's, it's probably resistance. Just, but yeah. I mean, I think it's fairly fast. So they had enough time to get a couple messages out. Okay. Uh, so the first message was completely wrong. He said it was going the opposite direction. To which the Iowa was like, All right, "Cool, whatever." Uh, realizing his mistake, the signalman tried again. This time, he completely botched it and accidentally signaled to the Iowa, we're going in reverse full speed, to which the Iowa's like, what are you telling yeah, us? What? Yeah. What? Uh, Why? Which, honestly, if I was on the Iowa at this point, I would be like, good. Go home. Right. Go as fast as you can. You should not be here. Um, finally, someone, the captain, had to break radio silence and ordered Iowa to turn right fast. After haggling over who was calling, the Iowa quickly obliged. Roosevelt asked, this was actually pretty cool. Roosevelt heard about all this and asked to be rolled over to watch the torpedo, like, approaching they the ship. way behind him. <laughs> yeah. This is way too much time. I know. If you're reading this, <laughs> it's too late. It's way too late. Yeah, so he has time to have. Roosevelt's this. like, wheel me up and wheel me to the edge, and I want to watch. Like, it's a duck. <laughs> right. Like, like oh, the swan. Like, like, a a swan like it's a manatee clear. coming yeah. at you. Yeah. So yeah, it's fucking Tony Soprano What happened actually is, is that uh, FDR then jumped off because he was going to jump onto the torpedo, but it was a dead torpedo, and he, j- he fell through it. <laughs> oh, he, the classic Florida story. Yeah. He rode the torpedo to into the Cyprus. Ship. Yeah, so the ship was facing, or FDR was facing the side of the ship that the torpedo was approaching, and he asked the Secret Service to take out their pistols just in case they couldn't miss it. Start shooting the I, torpedo? Like, what? Is I like that, that how that, torpedoes work? No, and I, well, <laughs> Maybe. no, probably not. I don't know. Do you know enough? I don't. About torpedo I don't, technology? but I do know that bullets, like, when they hit the water, die. It is like, it's like that's those scenes in Saving Private Ryan where the bullets are like shooting through the water and killing people. Oh, yeah. No, that, that's not how bullets work. I think like they bullets, can skip, though. But if you're shooting it down oh. into the water, like the water, like it doesn't, it doesn't do that. Bullets don't do that in the water. Huh. Right. Interesting. And then you don't use bullets in fire because you want to let them burn. Yeah, don't shoot. Let them burn. Oh, really? Is that? That's from Saving Private oh, Ryan. Okay. Like, don't shoot. Anyway. Let them burn. This was, uh, you know, they missed. Thankfully, they got on the radio just in time. They turned the boat. Just in time? It sounds like it lasted 20 minutes. I don't know how far away they were, yeah. but it had to have been far. Um, so at this point, the Admiral orders the porter to leave the convoy. I imagine they weren't trying just to. Like, get the, just, just, <laughs> just go home. <laughs> like, my only thing is drunk like. friend. It's <laughs> like, dude, all right, man. Yeah, like, you fucking puked in that trash can over there. You creeped out this girl we're talking to. Yeah. Next thing you know, you're going to put a hole in my drywall or in yeah, this case, the president's did, head. Yeah. Like, yeah. just go home. Yeah. I think they were just not going to try the third times a charm thing with almost. There, killing, hasn't it been three times? Well, for almost killing the president, it's only been twice. Oh, fair. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they've, they fucked up yeah, four times though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the crew followed orders and sailed to Bermuda where they found themselves confronted by armed Marines who were there to arrest them. All of them. It's the first time an entire Navy crew has been arrested in its entirety. So, after all the appropriate questions are answered, the captain and a few officers were sentenced to shore duty. It could have been much worse. By U.S. Marines? Bohemians. What? Who arrested them? U.S. Marines? U.S. Marines yeah. did. They, um, there was a genuine fear that they had yeah. been taken over. or like That they were spies or yeah. something like that. They're because like, they're like, how can you much? fuck yeah. up this much? Yeah. Uh, the guy who forgot to disable the torpedo and put it in there, I guess like maybe the way they do um, 
live versus fake torpedoes and depth charges is they just disarm them and send them out like duds. But Maybe a depth charge. I don't know how a torpedo works. I don't either. But um, he got hard labor. He got, like, hard time. They were like, you're going to jail. Sick. Cool. Yeah. Roosevelt, though, later pardoned him. For a fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. They were like, he's like, no. Don't send noobs to... What do you, yeah. What do you... You don't send first day secret service guy to protect the president. Yeah. No. That's not how it works. So, um... How else is he going to get experience? Yeah. Throw him into the deep end? I mean, the deep end would be the Pacific Theater, Hold his feet I imagine. To the fire. Yeah, yeah, that's really the deep end. But also, that's kind of the deep end because you're having the president, Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the Secretary of State all on a boat. Yeah. I mean, honestly, but there's just more danger in the Pacific than there is in the Atlantic, especially in 43. There's still U boats aplenty, but yeah. like, there's no real German naval power in the. There's no it, we're, it, fleet. The, the naval battles are happening in the Pacific side of it. Yeah. Really. yeah. yeah. But, um, and even by 43, they're getting less. Yeah, so obviously no one's going to let the Porter get anywhere near a high-profile mission ever again. Uh, so they sent them to the only campaign no one ever really cared about, the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. Um, they sent them after that was done. It was nice. Same crew, though? Yes, yeah, same crew. Okay. Everybody's the same. So uh, after surviving in the freezing cold for nearly a year without a disaster, everything was going well. Right up until they were about to leave for reassignment. So they get a new assignment. No, and did they have one of these, like, zero days since our last incident calendar? <laughs> zero days since the last time we almost killed the president? Yeah. Yeah. So they were at about 360 That's at sweet. this point. Pretty impressive from what I'm hearing. Well, they had story. nothing to do. They were just in the Aleutian Islands, which had already been, I think, retaken by the I want to say US. that's the one part of the United States that got yeah. occupied well, <laughs> by the Axis. Yeah. Well, Japan showed up, and no one was really, like, there. Yeah. They were, like, there was actually a lot of casualties in that one. By Alaska? Yeah, the yeah, Japan. Japanese took some Aleutian Islands in, in World War II. The Alaska owned them. Why? Why not? Because it was there? To That's, say they could. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good piece of propaganda. It's the same thing as like the fucking Doolittle raid. That didn't do anything. It was just to be like, dude, we can hit them. Right? That's what Alaska's doing. Like, yeah, we took some American land. Or Japan was doing, yeah, we took some American land in this territory. Yeah. Not even a state yet, but we got it. Yeah, this is kind of theirs. Yeah. It's literally closer to us than it is to them, but we got it. We should do that now. Just, take, just slice off a little bit of Siberia? Like anything, like any little island that's remotely by We us. took Madagascar. <laughs> Fuck it. I mean, we have a lot of random islands. We do. A lot in the Pacific. Yeah, Guam, the American Samoa. What if we just took Haiti? Why? Why would we do that? Haiti's not even a full island, by the way. I know. It's half Dominican. I only Republic. want to take half. Let's get the. You half want to take the Haiti side? No, let's get the half with the baseball players at least. They might be down, yeah, dude. I think they would give it to you. Yeah. Do you really want that? That's like a fucking trillion dollar hole you're yeah. just buying. We don't have to put money into it. No, it takes money from you once you take it. Yeah. I mean, I guess you don't have to pay for it. It's just going to be the same then. What do you get out of it? I mean, I guess all you got to do is throw some paper towels at it every time a hurricane comes. Just put an American America. flag yeah. on, on their soil. It's like we the did it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Take the Dominican. Get the baseball players. All right, we'll players. get the baseball players. Yeah. yeah. We'll take, <laughs> like, can we take both? I guess. Just take the just whole, take whole thing. Just take the whole thing. Hispaniola is the name of the island. Yeah. Is it really? Is yeah. that what it's called? Yeah. Man, if you just got rid of that border and created a whole race war there. It is a... Well, they're all black, but yeah. it's really weird that that, that island is super bizarre yeah no they just like drew a line down the middle and it's like french spanish have you heard about the whole uh hermaphroditism issue there no apparently on one side of the island there is a much higher rate of hermaphrodite birth cases interesting i don't know if that's the correct term anymore or whatever but I'll... that's when you're born with both yeah genitals? yeah okay it's oh, like so insanely high and it's uh, an imaginary border that happens to either that means that it's equal and one side's I just killing go with them haiti I got to go with Haiti is where that, the side that happens on. <laughs> That's just where all the fucked up shit happens. It's a lot of There's like a really shit. hilarious but fucked up family guy joke where it's like, it's like the time Godzilla like attacked Haiti and Godzilla, like you see like these bur- this burning rubble and then it pulls out and Godzilla comes out of the water to attack. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh, oh my God. And just like backs up. Family guy still has it in my opinion. Uh, it's really like if you watch a whole episode of Family Guy, it's not very good. But if you just like YouTube random jokes Clips, from it, yeah. it's fantastic. No, yeah. You I, honestly, I watch Family Guy now. I'll smoke a bowl, like be on my phone, and I'll look up for yeah. a cutaway. I'm like, ha! <laughs> I'll keep looking. For sure, like Family Guy is like, think, you know, TikTok was made. It's, it's for, volume yeah. shooting. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, so yeah, they get reassigned. Uh, they're going to go out into the Pacific theater finally. But, uh, right before their assignment, one of the sailors on board had gotten pretty drunk, uh, the night before they were supposed to leave and decided to give the big guns a whirl, fired off around. Well, you know, when you're on a destroyer, you got to feel like destroying. Again, <laughs> you got to be, be the boat, be the boat, be the boat. Yeah. This is what earn your title. God damn. Yeah. It's, it's, this is what these people were trained to do. So, uh, unfortunately for this sailor, the shell lands in the base commander's front yard. And uh, it explodes his flower garden. Okay. Uh, this would have been bad enough, except the sailor fired it while the commander had other officers and their wives over for a party. So by this point, everyone's just dumping. They're, they're starting to change up crew mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Basically, if you end up on this boat, it's a punishment. Okay. So uh, the porter was basically the latrine duty of the Navy. It served on. Uh, serving on it was considered a punishment, but it was okay because the war was drawing to a close and the ship and was getting have to get killed. Yeah. And the ship was getting reassigned mm, to the Pacific. Sounds more dangerous than uh, the Pacific. Well, no, they're not killing themselves. Well, they're hurting other, they're potentially hurting other people. It's actually the safest boat to be on yeah. in the entire ocean. Yeah. Cause it's, you're only going to get hurt being destroying <laughs> outwardly. Mostly. The only thing that's out. gotten yeah. it once was the earth with a wave. Right. Everything else has been fucked by yeah. it. So uh, by 1945, the ship's reputation had not improved. Her crew was often welcomed with the phrase, don't shoot, we're Republicans. <laughs> Which is just classic just perfect. Yeah. joshing from the Navy. Hey, uh, Her reputation sank even lower after she riddled another sister ship with gunfire during the early stages of the Battle of Okinawa. And it was relegated to Which the... Which is f- hilarious <laughs> because like there weren't even... Japanese ships, I think, around at least not large ships around Okinawa at that point. It's just it's meant for one thing. I could totally fact check me on that if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure the Japanese Navy was like ass fucked by Okinawa. Like that's late forty five, mid to late forty five. <laughs> so or mid to late war, I should say. Yeah. So basically at this after they riddle the other ship with weapons or guns or whatever, they're like, Hey, go to the perimeter. Just go. Just get Sail out. Just out. Get out here. Sail out. Because the only thing those boats would really be shooting at are... Okay, here's how it probably riddled another boat with bullets. Is that it was trying to shoot a plane. And it just followed Brrr, it down. Yeah. yeah, and just kept going down way too far. Yeah. Or they're like, I'll get that kamikaze. And they just like keep shooting after it hits the boat or hits the water. And they <laughs> the other boat's like, Jesus Christ, yeah, guys. Come on, it's down. <laughs> yeah. Fuck! So they were sent to the perimeter of the Battle of Okinawa to make sure they didn't kill anyone. And they actually did all right out there in the perimeter. What, they, doing nothing? No, they used their anti-sub and anti-aircraft weapons correctly this time, and they avoided sinking Allied ships. They shot down five Japanese planes. Okay. Um, not bad at all, all Pretty things good. considered. Yeah. Normally, almost all of their weapons have been discharged at allies. Yeah, so, at Americans. Yeah. What they did is you, just, you aim at it, and you just picture a wheelchair. <laughs> they just told them, what that, hey... It? FDR is on one of these uh, yeah, what these is zero a, what is pilots. a kamikaze zero but a but a <laughs> flying wheelchair. Uh, however, among the enemy planes, there were wooden canvas bombers. Uh, I don't know if you remember discussion about those in the Night Witch episode, but the women mm-hmm. they were uh, flying wooden canvas bomber planes to avoid radar. So uh, there was little metal on the Japanese wooden canvas bombers as well, and they easily slipped past the uh, radar on the porter. So when this one plane aimed for a ship near the porter, uh, was going at it, the porter took evasive maneuvers. The plane crashed into the ocean, and the boys celebrated once more. It was a good dodge. What they didn't realize, though, was that the kamikaze plane kept its trajectory under the water. Okay. And uh, the boat exploded directly beneath the ship. The what? Or no, not the boat. The plane exploded directly beneath the ship. Okay. It crashed and like, so here's the boat. It yeah. crashed like right here, went under. Right. And then it exploded. exploded. They said the force of the explosion was so strong. It lifted the boat out of the water, brought oh. it back down. Um, so they were all high fiving, like just like, yeah. fuck yeah, we've you done it. it Redemption. <laughs> like, fucking go. Just a, they got sank by a plane that had already crashed. Okay. That's how it ends. That's the end of the porter. <laughs> That's the end of the porter, man. Not so I'll, I'll go through a little bit more. Um, that basically spelled the end of it. So I thought you were just going to be like, and the worst part is to celebrate, they were just like dumping shark pheromones into the water. <laughs> <laughs> they, were just, no, the worst, they were just like, yeah, eat that Japanese pilot. So the worst part about all of it, Jump though, the waters. is yeah. that they, tried, they did try to save the boat. 
And what? How? It's, it, it, they tried. Okay. They have to try. So I can't imagine being like, can you imagine being on a destroyer and it lifts up enough to be completely out of the water? Like being on a boat. I certainly can't imagine that. That's no. a huge boat. No. It's not like, I, I did mean, not like the only cruise I've ever been on. I didn't like it for one second. Really? Like I had to be so drunk all the time to even deal with the fact that we were just on some giant boat in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And imagine if it was airborne. <laughs> imagine right. like it just hit all of it sudden just something hit a- exploded under it. <laughs> yeah. But um, I didn't like I just was not a fan. I'm never going on a cruise again. So tell me your favorite moment from that cruise. Uh little Dicky not caring to meet oh, me. Oh, it was that uh, one. Um <laughs> Eating food that felt like it hadn't been refrigerated at a cold enough temperature. What about the crowd? Were you a big fan of the crowd? Oh man, that was the f- that crowd was frat, so it was pretty cool. It definitely wasn't like twenty four year old garbage trash. My people. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was like Dan would have blended in quite well with it. A lot of bad tats. Yeah, it was a lot invited. of bad tats. I wasn't biting. You well, were you not. Were, you weren't content. There so. were a couple of people I liked. The Canadians I met, I liked. Those guys partied, and there are a couple other guys I liked that like, that I met, and, and a couple of fun girls too. But like overall, the crowd. Honestly, my favorite moment is when a uh, Tiger's bodyguard beat the shit out of Cash Cash. That was tight. Who the hell is Cash Cash? Uh, it's a two-man, I, I believe, uh, DJ group, and one of them had to be airlifted off the cruise. Yeah. They had to bring a also, helicopter did, into the didn't boat? did Kendall Jenner get airlifted onto the cruise? Kendall Jenner wasn't there. She never went? It was um, Brody Jenner. Okay. Who was, uh, it was around. Me and DVD I went backstage for the Tiger show. Brody Jenner was a nice guy. Okay. So let me ask you a question. How long do you think the average lifespan of a naval ship is? Uh, well, the USS Missouri lasted from World War II to the Gulf War. Yeah, forever. Yeah. It's usually about 30 to 45 years. Yeah. Uh, this one made it two. Two years? Two years. Well, it's you know, a lot, of, a lot of ships got sank in World War II. It's, yeah. What's funny is, is that it really almost really wasn't its own fault. This For one, all the ways it tripped over its own dick. It's just unlucky. It just, I like, that's what I kind of was like trying to decide on is like, this is the most incompetent crew yeah. or just the unluckiest boat? What really should have happened is like, it should have like pulled that ship in the Suez Canal and like, as it was going to the Pacific, like crashed into the side of the Panama Canal. <sighs> Don't you dare put that on us. We're still feeling the effects of the Suez Canal boat. Are we? That's what's Did we crashing. ever? That's what's crashing the economy right is now. Is it? It's, it's finally all the chickens are coming home to roost. Yes. Yeah. You thought it was a funny meme. Now we have inflation. <sighs> Thanks to that boat. Yeah. yeah. Solely that boat. No other. Reason. We knew it would happen. We knew it was coming. Uh, but yeah, no. So that, it, it was struck from the Navy's record on July 11th, 2000, or not 2000, day, <laughs> 1945. 1945. So it made it uh, two years and five days. So wait, who was its captain the same the whole time? Uh, yeah, I think so. Let me double check. Because it feels like it's mostly on him for not reining in that destroyer's need to destroy. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're riding a bear or you're riding, you know, a tiger, as many people do as they saddle it. Or if you're riding on a bear. Right. In a motorcycle. Maybe in, like, the sidecar. You're responsible for that. Yeah. Like, you, you are, that animal is yours. You can't just let a destroyer, you can't let a destroyer be itself. Like, you need to rein it in. That thing's a Bronco. I'm just mixing You gotta break it, right? You gotta break that shit. Right. And he never broke it. Let me see here. Um, He remained, so he was in command until 1944. Uh, The original guy. The original guy, yeah. So he later became a rear admiral. Um, Let's see. I'm trying to see if they. I hope in adult films and not. And not in no. the Navy no, he's during in, a war? He's in the Navy during oh, a war. Okay, that's, yeah. that's not as good. I, no. that, uh, that's not where he should have been. Uh, so like. Charles M. Keyes relieved Lieutenant Commander Walter as the commanding officer in May of 1944. Either way. So the ship you're saying is, it's a cursed ship. It, uh, yeah, the porter. The porter. Yes. It's just kind of like a bumbling idiot ship. Yeah. That's basically what it is. It's like, you know, I, I like to hear about, obviously, all the heroic shit, but I like to hear about yeah. just, like, people fucking Could up. someone, like, steal, like, the bottle of champagne it was christened with from, like, a widow? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and 
that's what happened or like why like there has to be some like unleashed good, like a banshee on yeah the board. there has to be some good like you know like sea swept like light old abandoned lighthouse explanation for why this right. boat was because there's nothing more haunted than the sea oh no the sea's the most haunted thing of all time yeah we don't even know what's in there so it has to be some sort of explanation where like well, we one day one, one of their sailors was just like you know what i don't give a fuck about the widow the widow of walter's wharf and they just like pissed all over somebody's grave and then we're like, yes, yeah, I serve on the porter, you slut. And then, like, they got on the boat, <laughs> and a ghost followed them. Yeah. No, I, um, I don't know, man. Maybe they stole something. Maybe, maybe the captain did something wrong. What's a movie like that where they, ha- they like, steal something and nothing's going to get better until they return it to- from whence it came? Oh, man, there's so many things like that. Yeah. Um, it's, like, really common. Actually, the, the petrified forest in Arizona, you're not supposed to take anything out of there. Okay. Or else your life I mean, just obviously, sucks. that's any, like, Egyptian thing, too. Yeah. Can't take, can't take stuff from the tombs or you're fucked. That's dumb. Yeah. I wish you could take stuff from the tombs. Honestly, like, every time I see them start to crack open another sarcophagus, I'm like, are we really doing this again? Just want to What let- a great tourist attraction that would be. It was just, like, tomb raiders. <laughs> Go steal shit. Like you just hire a private archaeologist to find tombs solely to steal things. Right. Like a travel agency that right. is solely dedicated to tomb raiding. Yeah. Right? Like in Amer- like, like it's the same thing as like storm chasing. Really? Yeah. It's, it's just you, you you're chasing the danger. Actually, tomb raiding would be kind of fun because there's like booby traps and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like who wants to go first? Down the hall. <laughs> I wouldn't be anywhere near it. This is Nef- like- this is Nefertiti's tomb. Yeah, no, you're just going to get, like, a cold, dead air blow in your face, and it's like, oh, you have, like, ancient herpes now. Oh, yeah. cool. Poison dart to the neck. <laughs> Should have seen this coming. Anyway. You never, you're never the first, but you're never the last. What'd you guys learn? You want to go somewhere probably, like, third or fourth? Yeah. Yeah. After just, everyone else dies. Well, you need the adrenaline from the first death to keep you from dying second. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, yeah, the first death never gets the death adrenaline. Like, they, they're the one to die, so they don't get the adrenaline to think better. Yeah. What'd you learn today? Learned about this boat, actually. I didn't realize it was a thing. Wasn't in the history books? Yeah, you don't learn about the fuck-ups. <laughs> Can you imagine, like, just having a chapter on this? In your social studies? Yeah, like they your didn't really grade cover social this. Studies book? They didn't cover this in FDR's, like, autobiography. Yeah. Well, they didn't cover the hand jobs either. No. What's, uh, what's the working title? <laughs> I was thinking boats and O-Nos. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah. And gee, uh, honestly, there is no Hitler all, all, in this. All is I, is all the I boat learned, Hitler? No, no, hold on. All, well, I got to what I learned first. All I learned is that, uh, you know, every military fucks up, especially in an engagement that large. Like, we hear about the Russian military now and all its hilarious, hilarious fuck-ups. We don't necessarily learn about the Three Stooges shit that the Ukrainian military has necessarily done right now, which I'm sure they have. Oh, There's a reason you coming. haven't heard about that. Um, I still obviously am go Ukraine and all that stuff, but you haven't heard about Ukrainian slapdick shit for a reason. Whereas you've heard about every single possible hilarious Russian slapdick thing. Oh yeah. Now granted also, you're never going to laugh as hard. Like if, if the Yankees are, are playing, uh, the pirates, you're never going to laugh as hard at an error that the pirates make as you are as an, at an error that the Yankees make Yeah. at the same time. So there's that to consider it too. But as far as what we learned from this, um, anytime you have any operation that big, there's just going to be like, like it, it, there's just going to be like a million insane things like that. And honestly, if you looked into it, all the, there are, um, there are so many desertion stories, so many shoot themselves in the foot stories, stuff that gets erased from history. People, it was not like every single person in the military was not like band of brothers where it was like, we volunteered and we were going to fight for each other. There were plenty of people that were like, fuck this shit. I am terrified. I'm going to shoot myself in the foot. Like if you've ever read like slaughterhouse five and like there were incompetent people that had no business being there. Catch 22 is another good example. Or like there's, there's stories. I remember reading a story of actually it might've been in band of brothers where they came across a guy who was just camping in the woods. Who was an American who was just from like the back woods of somewhere in America was afraid of, you know, getting killed or whatever, had his rifle, was killing deer and eating them, and was just like, yeah, I knew how to camp, so I just went and deep as in the forest I could because I thought I was going to fucking die if I stayed with the army and stuff like that. So you just don't, 
You don't hear about that. Yeah, shit. no, these are all people that were uh, very possibly drafted too. Like this isn't like, yeah, actually I feel like the Navy in particular, cause there was no air force. It was the army air corps in world war two. Uh. There was no air force until after world war two. So I feel like the Navy actually probably had a pretty high volunteer rate. Hmm. I can't, I'm just guessing. I don't know for sure. I guess like you, if you, uh, if, if you, you really don't go, get, if you really don't want to get shot at, yeah, go to the navy. Like just volunteer, of, jump just, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, there's pl- look, there's plenty of naval people that uh, risk their lives in World War II, no doubt about that. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like there might have been a higher chance in the navy that you could have been safer. But I don't, I don't really yes, actually. How know. did we get involved in World War II? Was it um, our naval base <laughs> being bombed? Yeah, I believe it was that. Dude. It was. Yeah. 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 Who's Hitler? Um. Well, it's not Hitler. No. Oh. Hitler had no part in this. You know what? I, you know who I think the worst person in this was? FDR. FDR. <laughs> what a dick. Well, FDR I almost see got this, himself killed. I want to see, see these boats shoot at some balloons. Yeah, it was essentially yeah. just doing a military parade. Like, that sounds like what a five-year-old asked for. Mommy, make the boats shoot the balloons. <laughs> what? Uh, just go to, go to your meeting. <laughs> just go. Dude. Sir? Yeah. Trying to get you God here as fast it. as possible. Also, it cannot, again, it cannot be easy to wheel a man around a 1940s battleship. No, probably it's not. not easy to it's wheel not a someone around now. It's not a battleship, it's a destroyer. No, but he was on the Iowa. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's not, by the way, like it's not easy to push my son around in a stroller now in certain places. And he's in a wheelchair when nothing has ramp access. That's true. Well, he's also a very fat baby. A very fat baby. An incredibly obese baby. He's a mongoloid. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Dan. <laughs> oh my I God. don't think he's that fat. I think he's just old fat. I don't even think you're using that slur right. He's not. Yeah. He's got a giant head. <laughs> no. <laughs> he's a water no. head. <laughs> no. No. Also not that. How are you? The, you're the only one. You're the soberest one here. What are you even doing right now? <laughs> <laughs> you guys got any other shit you want to talk about? <laughs> You good? Okay. Well, hey, guys, please be sure to check out softcorehistory.com. We got merch, and uh, please buy some. We love when people buy things. Yeah, uh, check out patreon.com uh, slash softcorehistory. Got some additional content every week. <laughs> we have some great content coming I want this a week. dictionary that Dan writes. <laughs> Just like slur dictionary. Anyway, um, we have a, a really good piece of content. We're also recording tonight, I believe. We're gonna um, re- maybe tomorrow. Um, we'll but it'll it be out. out Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, both will be out Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. but uh, other than that, yeah, check us out. Tell your friends. Rate us five stars. Like, subscribe, whatever. Anyway, for Dan Regester and Jake Goldman. Wait, God damn, I can't even get out of this thing. For Dan Regester and Rob Fox, I'm Jake Goldman. You nailed that. <laughs> and you just got soft served. <laughs>